everybody! Hi. Welcome to today's online satsang. I'm so glad you're here. Right off the bat, I want to start off with a meditation. It's been a little bit of a hectic day for me, and so I thought maybe the same might be going on for some of you. So let's start together in a brief meditation to help center us, bring us together here in the moment, and just relax and become very present together before we start talking. I invite you to close your eyes now, wherever you may be, close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, I invite you to notice just the subtle difference between your eyes being open and your eyes being closed. So if you want, you can reopen your eyes and then close them, noticing how it feels to simply close your eyes, going from light to the peaceful dark the peaceful dark of yourself. For a few minutes, we'll go together into a cave of solitude. I invite you now to begin noticing your breath. Notice how your breath feels moving in and out of your body, in through the nose and out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. With each exhale, Allow your body to sink into the earth. With each exhale, let your body become heavier and heavier and more and more peaceful. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. As you breathe out, also notice the movement of your stomach. And as you breathe out, see if you can tighten your stomach just a little bit and see if you can lengthen the exhale. So inhale and then in the exhale, Breathing out through your mouth, just see if you can tighten your abdomen just a little bit and then make the exhale just a little bit longer than normal. This will help you really, really relax. So inhaling as normal through the nose and then exhaling through the mouth and then just tightening the abdomen just a slight bit and seeing if you can lengthen the exhale. Good. And as you do this, you'll notice that your whole body relaxes. Your shoulders are relaxing. Your face is relaxing. Every part of you is relaxing. And now I'd like for us to set the intention. Intentions are so powerful and so strong. So take a moment and set the intention. Today our conversation is honoring our passions and curiosities. So ask yourself, what is it that I hope to experience today? What is my purpose for being here? What do I wish to experience or learn? And you can summarize it in a few words if you like. Or it could be as simple as I intend to learn about what 
My passions are, I intend to explore my curiosities. See if you can come up with just a few words that describe your personal intention for being here today. It's not a coincidence that we have met today here. Take advantage of this time. This is your time. And if you're in the middle of trying to do other things on Facebook, scrolling around, uh, multitasking, I really invite you to take this time for yourself. It's really powerful coming together in this space for spiritual awakening, spiritual practice. So just give yourself these few minutes, this half hour or so, to really be present in this space with like-minded friends. Feel, try and see if you can feel the energy of all of us together. You might feel a little bit expanded in your brow, in your forehead. You might feel a warmth in your heart. You might feel a little bit dizzy or spacey or just like a different kind of sensation. That's the sensation of coming together. Okay, loves, <clears throat> when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And thank you for participating in that opening meditation. I appreciate your willingness to do that. And I am just checking here to see who's on and say hi to people. Hi, Terry. Hi, Sarah. Blessings to you both. Okay. Um, feel free at any point to post comments or insights or questions. I will definitely get to you um, later in the conversation. Um, for now, I'll do a little talking and then we'll get to you later. All right. So today is significant because today is the first day that we are calling our online Facebook gatherings our online satsangs. I've been, as you probably know, hosting these online Facebook events for a couple of months now. And I thought, you know, it'd be really good to have a name for what we're doing here instead of just saying like Facebook event, Facebook live. Um, I thought, you know, there's, it would be great to have a name. To have like a sense of um, like an intention behind what we're doing that carries from event to event to event. So after much reflection and listening to Spirit for Guidance, the term online satsang just came into me and it felt really, really good and really right. So you might be asking yourself, what is satsang? Some of you may not um, have heard that term before, or maybe you've heard the term, but you don't know what it is exactly. Satsang is a Sanskrit word, and it's broken into two parts. Sat, meaning essence, reality, truth, being. Those are synonyms. And then song comes from the Sanskrit word sangha, which means association or gathering or meeting. So a satsang is a... A meeting, a gathering of seekers of truth. It's a coming together, associating with like-minded friends on a spiritual path. And through this coming together, we help each other. We support each other. We inspire each other. We encourage each other. And truly, 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 I believe that all the meditation in the world, um, you know, even if you were to meditate constantly every day, um, that only gets you to a certain point. But at a certain point, you have to meet with others who are on a similar path. So you can bounce ideas off of each other and just get that energetic boost from being in the company of those who understand what you're going through and what you're exploring. There is really no substitute for that. So... I think of these gatherings as online satsangs, 
and that's what they will be called. So today marks the first day that that will be um, the name of what we're doing. And I'll be offering these once or twice a month. If you have any input into when it's most convenient for you to have these, please let me know. Um, send me a message through my website or just comment here. I'm, I've been doing them on Sundays, but I'm open to suggestions. So let me know what works best for you and, you know, we'll make it, we'll do my, I'll do my best to make, make it happen. I also am looking for feedback from people. Um, if you have ideas on what topics and, um, just topics to discuss, because honestly, I don't want it to be about me, about what I want to discuss. I want to make this platform for all of you. I want to make this platform, um, very practical and what is in the moment of what you want to talk about now. So let me know what you want to talk about from week to week. I really, really would love to hear. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see here. Um, good, I'm glad to know that you are feeling that this is a good time, Sarah and Terry. That's really good. Okay. Yeah, and I'm thinking of maybe changing it to like 3 or 4 p.m. Eastern or maybe just experimenting to see um, the specific time on Sunday that works for people. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but that's the general idea is um, I want to make it work for all of you. Hey, Holly. Good to see you. Um, okay, let's dive in. So honoring our passions and curiosities. This is a discussion about the realities of being a human being in time. In time. As we go through the spiritual journey, we change. We change. We go into different directions and we learn and we grow and we release and we absorb. Everything is always changing. The Buddhist concept of impermanence is very relevant here. Um, the idea that nothing, nothing, nothing stays the same ever. So even the way that I feel now, oh, it's different. Oh, now it's different again. Oh, now my foot hurts. Oh, now my throat feels tickly, you know. Every second, things are changing, things are changing, things are changing. And when we're on a spiritual journey, and we're really in tune with that passion inside of us of really discovering what's true, of really tuning in, then it can get confusing sometimes because we might feel that we're changing too much sometimes. We might get confused. One of the... Um, the things that I've been thinking about on the how as this relates to this topic is my own personal journey and bear with me I want to get personal for a minute and be very vulnerable with you and go into uh, a discussion about myself for a second here as kind of a, an illustration of what we're talking about so when I published my book in 2015 which, by the way, doesn't even feel like my book. It feels like the universe's book because truly it was channeled through me. So saying my book feels kind of weird. But anyway, um, when the book came out in 2015, Opening Love, um, I was definitely on fire. I was learning everything I could about polyamory 
And for those of you who don't know, polyamory is a spiritual path that is with the idea that we can openly and honestly um, have more than one significant intimate partner simultaneously. So we can choose to honestly and openly have intimate relationships with multiple people. Um, it doesn't have to be we go from one partner to the next to the next to the next in a kind of serial monogamy kind of way. We can have multiple partners at the same time. Uh, not necessarily group sex or anything, not like simultaneous lovemaking necessarily, but um, the idea of just having multiple partners and everyone knowing about it and working through jealousy issues and um, working on possession issues of possession and attachment and um, basically using uh, relationships as a platform for spiritual growth. So um, that book, Opening Love, was inspired by my own journey into polyamory. So I was like completely, ugh, you know, at that time, so, 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 so on fire about polyamory. I was going to polyamory meetup groups and support groups and starting my own. I started my own local um, meetup group, support group, and I was doing a lot of what you could, I guess, call activism work, um, raising awareness, raising consciousness in the general society about polyamory as a valid relationship orientation. Um, you know, people talk about sexual orientation like, I'm gay, I'm trans, I'm whatever this to that. Um, and I was helping to raise awareness about polyamory, polyamory as a relationship orientation, that some people just feel like they're born or naturally inclined to having many um, intimate partnerships simultaneously. So I was really, you know, around that time, 2015, that was like my life. I mean, that was my path. That was everything to me. And it was awesome. And then in the next year or so after that, um, I basically, I basically, I went into the depths of polyamory. The depths. I went as far and as deep as I could possibly go into that area of life. And, you know, at the time, I didn't think that there would be a point when other things would grab my attention more. I thought, this is me for life. Like, this is, like, the highest I can go. This is the deepest I can go. This is so profound. Because it is, in some ways. I mean, it is extremely radical, extremely profound. Facing jealousy intentionally, working through, um, basically, like, a... Ugh, polyamory is very, very intense for spiritual growth. So, you know, I thought it would never end. I thought it would never end. And then something interesting happened. I met someone. I met someone. And that relationship was on a whole other level than anything I'd ever experienced before. Um, for those of you who have read my book, it's, the person is not mentioned in the book because I hadn't met them yet. I actually met them while I was <laughs> on my book tour for the book. So, But as that relationship developed over the next couple of years, I learned a lot about myself. And I was taken to new, new places in myself that were so deep and so profound and this person actually did not identify as polyamorous, interestingly enough. And it was funny, too, because I had said so many times to people, I would never date someone who was not poly. Never in a million years. That's, that's my boundary. That's my limit. I would never do it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I met someone where the connection was so strong and so powerful and so intense that I thought, well... The universe seems to be guiding me towards this person, so I'm going to explore it. Now, when I was with this person, I was in other relationships simultaneously. 
um, at various points in our relationship. But at one point, um, our relationship was, I don't know if you could even call it monogamous because we didn't put a label on it necessarily as monogamous. We created our own agreements of what um, we were doing in that relationship. So in a way, it wasn't just standard monogamy, which is what most people do. They just um, default into monogamy because that's what everyone else does. So it's an unquestioned standard. But so, I mean, ours had more consciousness going into it. Um, but it was just very much about the two of us in our relationship. And it was um, mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing. And then that relationship lasted a while. And then it went into um, a period in my life where that relationship actually started to to slowly um, end. <laughs> And, um, that was very painful. And then it led me into a phase, which is the phase I'm in right now, which is intensely exploring what it means to be single and believe it or not, celibate, <laughs> um, sexually celibate. So right now I am intentionally practicing celibacy. So I have set up um, specific dates for myself that I'm exploring this, like it's a boundary that I've given myself. Um, I'm not going to enter into any um, intimate slash sexual relationship with anyone for a certain period of time. Um, and also not exploring masturbation with myself. Why? Why am I doing this? <laughs> um, I'm doing this because it's just the next step on my journey. And it, it's amazing to me, um, if you would have, you know, told me three or four years ago that you would be, hey, Anya, did you know in three or four years you'll be practicing celibacy? I would say, that's stupid. I would never do that. Um, but that's what I'm doing right now. Because for me, and I would never um, promote this as like the best thing for anyone else, but just for me, this is where the universe, spirit, God has guided me to. I felt like when my book was published, when I put all that passion and energy into that book, I explored polyamory to such a deep extent. I went as deep and deep and deep as I could go. And I did it in a way that I didn't know there would ever be an end to it. And not to say there's ever really an end to anything, um, because in some ways I'm still exploring polyamory in certain ways in my life, what I've learned from it and different lessons from it. But um, in terms of like actively practicing it, I'm not anymore. I don't know what the future holds. But anyway, so, but I went into polyamory not knowing there would be an end point and completely fine and surrendered with the idea that I was going to be poly for the rest of my life. And that was my path. And that was awesome. But it, as it so happened, which I could have never predicted, you know, as I said, I went into this next phase of my life where I actually explored um, conscious monogamy again. Conscious, meaning um, we made agreements about what that means, me and my partner, and it was a different kind of monogamy than I had explored previously to the polyamory phase. And then I moved into what I'm in now, which is um, intentionally practicing um Oh, wow, Janet Hardy, hi. Um, and now pra purposely practicing celibacy and um, being single. What does it mean to be single? And right now, I am deeply, deeply exploring um, this interesting phenomenon of being a single woman who's in her mid-30s, who's childless, <laughs> and recognizing all the stereotypes that society has about me as somehow being flawed, as somehow being like an outsider or mischievous or flawed or broken or um, that I must be lonely, right? I must be miserable. I must be actively looking or hoping for a partner. Guess what? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not any of those things. Uh, right now, I am... Yes, of course, there's times when I deal with loneliness. Um, yes, it comes up. 
but for the most part, the majority of the time, I am loving this life that I'm in and I'm loving being celibate because, um, as some of you know, I'm an energy worker and so I'm intensely focused on energy, how energy moves in the body, how we can use it for healing and expansion. And I'm consciously bringing that sexual energy, which tends to um, be activated in the root chakra and the sacral chakra. And I am intentionally bringing that energy up, rising it up into my upper chakras. And it's um, a meditative technique that I'm essentially using the sexual energy with the intention of enlightenment of expansion and it's really interesting seeing what's happening with my body and what my mind and my heart right now and for me right now this is the most exciting path this is my passion this is my passion and this is my curiosity because honestly I don't know what's gonna happen next I don't know where this journey is leading me this is a completely new territory for me like completely um, most people are celibate when they have to be, like if they're in between relationships and they like can't find anyone. Um, it's not an intentional celibacy. So um, I kind of feel like I joke with my friends, like I'm a monk right now <laughs> because I'm not engaging with my sexuality in that normal way. Um, and it's been super interesting um, going from where I've been to where I am now. But the point I'm trying to make is that each of us needs to, I'm not going to say needs to, that sounds like a command, but each of us can go within ourselves and really look at what is the deepest that you can go with something, whether it's an identity um, label like such as polyamorous or queer or bisexual or Christian or Jewish or I, whatever label of, of passion. Um, what is it that you're most curious about at this time? And allowing ourselves to go as deep, 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 deep into that realm of experience as we possibly can. Go all the way. Go all the way. No matter what other people say about you, no matter how other people might react, be fearless, be courageous. Going into that deep exploration. And go as deep as you can, not knowing when it's going to shift or it may never shift. Some people go on a path and then it's their rest of their life. I don't know for myself and it scares me. Let me tell you, it scares me, but I don't know. Um, I, you know, I have a date on the calendar of when I'm going to be done experimenting with my celibacy because I just wanted to give myself like a framework of time because it felt too scary to say indefinitely, because um, I am a very sexual person. I am a very intensely fiery sexual person. So I gave myself this, quote, deadline. You know, at the end of the deadline, I might decide to continue it. Maybe I'll keep continuing it for the rest of my life, because maybe that's what spirit wants from me. Maybe that's what the universe wants from me. I don't know. Or it could be that after a certain period of time, something else will grab my curiosity, grab my attention, and I have to go deep into that because I just have to. I'm compelled to. So my advice, my guidance for you is abandon yourself honor, honor that natural curiosity, that God-given curiosity within you, whether it's pursuing a specific career path, <coughs> a hobby, a, um, anything, 
you know. Um, I was uh, this morning speaking with a gentleman who has spent the last 30 years studying A Course in Miracles. He said he's read it every day. He's read that book every single day for 30 years. So for him, it's a 30-year journey that continues, where for someone else, they might dive deeply into it for a year and then move on. But on the spiritual path, we have to be okay with allowing change. And if it's time to let something go, to open up the space for something new to emerge, for something new to come in, then that's good. Or sometimes we have to just keep going with one thing, one thing, one thing for a long time, years, decades, maybe a whole lifetime. Because something is so compelling that we don't want to distract ourselves or go to anything else. So the idea is to allow that change, if it's organic, if it um, feels right, allow that change. Or to continue something, to allow ourselves to get so deeply invested in something that it consumes us. I really appreciate the space to have this conversation because I think it's so important that we talk about the reality of change and giving ourselves permission to change if we need to. I have definitely felt some trepidation about exploring the path of celibacy after having such a unique and radical experience with polyamory wondering if people would think I was flaky or um, not serious about my spiritual path. I've had all kinds of doubts come up in my mind, but ultimately I'm not going to continue being the same person that I was. I needed to allow myself to change and flow with my natural curiosities and passions. So I have done some talking here. And now, let's see, does anyone here have suggestions of things you want me to elaborate more on? Or do you have any questions about anything we've talked about? Anything at all? Um, Trinity said, are you promoting a new book? And no, not really. That wasn't the intention. Um, although I have started brainstorming for my next book, um, which is going to be about healing trauma. So that will be probably published the next, I don't know, handful of years, I'm thinking. That's where spirit is leading me at this time. I'm not seeing any questions or comments. Okay. Well, um, oh, Orlando. Okay. Terry says, um, I see you as a visionary exploring spiritual matters and teaching us what you have discovered. Thanks. Yeah, that is what I'm doing. Um, I definitely am not, I don't want to put myself on a pedestal above anyone else. I am just a person who really loves sharing. It's kind of like my, my, it's my thing, you know, um, I'm a natural teacher. I come from a whole line of teachers. My grandfather was a minister, a Presbyterian minister, um, my mother, a teacher, um, everybody <laughs> seems like in my family is some kind of teacher. Um, so that's just me. And I know in my many past life incarnations, I've been a teacher as well, a teacher and a spiritual seeker. So this is just comes natural to me. Um, 
And, you know, I just want to be really honest about the different changes that I'm going through and what I'm exploring. And I feel really privileged to have explored all the different things I have. I remember when I was, um, even like in high school, I remember just wanting to always explore the things that other people didn't want to explore because maybe they didn't think it was significant enough or interesting or just boring or something. I remember this one, this one, um, assignment I had in English class. The teacher asked us to write like an essay about a novel that we had read. And, um, she said to pick one of the characters and do this like analysis of the character. And I picked the character who had like two lines in the whole book <laughs> and like had like, was really not even really a character. It was just like randomly showed up on like two pages or something. And, um, I wrote a whole long essay on that. And my teacher was saying, why did you do that? I don't understand, but you did a brilliant job. And I just felt like I wanted to go, I wanted to dive into this really obscure thing that I knew no one else would, would try to discuss. And it just felt really exciting to me. And I guess that's what I've always done in some ways. Um, you know, I've come from a really conservative background, um, where the whole notion of being gay was just super frowned upon. And I remember discovering, um, you know, many years ago that I was attracted to women and then coming out about that publicly and then, you know, just teaching about bisexuality with people and then going into teaching about um, queer issues, LGBTQ issues, and then going into body issues, teaching um, other women to love, our, you know, celebrate our bodies, and teaching about sacred sexuality, and really, like, essentially, I feel like my life has been trying to break every taboo that exists. <laughs> um, and that's just me. That's what turns me on. Um, and I want to connect with like-minded others who feel similarly who want to go, and not just for the, sh like, not for shock value, and not to just seem like, ooh, I'm special, but really just diving into those places where the majority of people won't go. And I feel like the value of diving into those places really deeply and exploring them and then sharing with others is, the value, I think, is raising the general collective conscious awareness. Because the mainstream is not where the truth is. Sorry to say, it's not. The truth lies in the satsang, in the gathering of like-minded seekers, like we're doing now. That's where the truth lies. Whether it's just two people meeting or 2,000 people, you can feel that energy of people who are saying, you know what, I don't really care what appears normal to most people. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me see. I know someone just posted something. My computer is being a little slow here. Bear with me. Um, mm, yeah, Terry says, my passion currently is the reconciliation of magic to God. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, Terry, I don't know. Maybe you could post a little bit more about that here for others to read. Um, it's like, I, you know, what do you mean? Um, reconciliation of magic to God. What does that mean to you? What is magic? What is God? Those are two very loaded terms that have so many different meanings to so many different people. Maybe you could post just a little bit here about what that means to you, um, because I'm definitely curious about it. Uh, Sarah says, um, work, she's working on um, being successful with creativity, with art, writing, and our work with following the guidance of the universe, and we're interested in learning more about our spirit guides and recognizing their guidance in our lives. Yeah. That's beautiful. There's so much there. 
Yeah. Um, it's interesting you should say that the guidance part at the end too, because um, that was the topic of, I went to a service this morning, um, a unity service, unity church, and the speaker was talking about um, basically allowing our egos to take a back seat to the guidance of the universe, the guidance of, you know, God, Christ, Buddha consciousness, whatever you want to call it, and um, allowing that to lead the way and how that is actually the most wise way that we can live our lives. And I think, too, um, listening to that guidance is just a natural, a natural, it opens the way for a natural outflowing of creativity. Because if we are in tune with that higher force, that guidance, that higher wisdom, then we are creative. We are creators. We are creators. So it's kind of a natural thing. All right. Okay. So it feels like this is a good place to wrap it up. And I really appreciate everyone who's been here. I would like to invite comments. Um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, then um, I would love to hear your feedback about what is it in your life right now that seems new or exciting or different or radical or it's just like got a pull that you really, really want to explore. You've been pondering it, exploring it. It's been in the back of your mind. And what is that? And just if you could just share with us, what is it that you are um, right now really feeling drawn to explore? And maybe it's something that you're scared to explore. Maybe it's something that brings up some fears in you because maybe you have to let something old go in order to open up the space within yourself. Um to explore that new territory. Sure. Um, let me just share what Sarah said here. She, she said, please, let me just, uh, will you, you know, share that last bit. So um, Sarah said, we have been in a period of transition for a while now and discovering the freedom we can have Part of it being what Terry said with God and magic in our life. God did miracles like healing the blind and things like that. We too can he heal ourselves and others, and sometimes that means prayer and magic working together. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, Terry says, the issue of using energy to create a life you really want, this usage of magic for practical purposes is known as witchcraft and so people won't use it because it is not a sin. Well my position is that it is not a sin and God actually wants us to use it. Yeah I love that idea of practical magic. Um, I love that like that feminine deep sacred feminine earthy wisdom that people can call witchcraft whatever they want to label it um, that makes things happen. You know, if you take some sage and a full moon and some words of prayer and mix it all together, you know, what happens? What happens? Oh, cool. Well, thank you, Sarah and Terry, for, for everything you've shared. I really appreciate that. I really, really love this community. So this concludes our satsang for today. I love you all so very much. Please be blessed on your journey and know that you are not alone. You are not alone. There's many others who are on the path. We're finding our way together. Namaste.